Hello everyone. How come? <laughs> and hello guys. I am here in Campos Party today and so Java in the campus. I um, see we we stage we stay jobs and more later we start uh, uh, talks about career uh, in stage jobs and look this event is amazing and it's very well look all right but here and today um, we have a great friendly uh, Rafael uh, he started a conversation with he, with Stan about career and they have a good lessons I recommend and they, you give it a great attention for for this talk all right and Maximilian you have a, uh, you have a things for for talk yeah, I must. Uh, I do. I, I'd like to say that I'm so happy to to be here. So, um, and uh, I, I help. Uh, I hope that you are enjoying those this talk. This talk will be amazing. We, Rafael Del Nero is is our reference in the Java world. So, I, I will bring here right now, and uh, come in. Hello, everyone. I'm okay. really happy to be here, and uh, looking forward to be helping uh, the Java community and everyone uh, that is uh, watching this talk. Yeah, so I will be on a backstage. So I will let's let's Rafael control the show. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> Rafael, oh. this stage is for you. Uh, and it's just funny. <laughs> OK, thank you, guys. Let's get started then. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, so my screen is there, you can see it. Talking about the 10 golden lessons um, that will boost your software development career, okay? So let's go to the next slide. So briefly here, we're gonna be discussing about um, why it's important to dream big, why it's important to take responsibility, why you should be responsible for everything that happens in your life, uh, I'm going to be talking about um, having a mentor, um, why this is important, and why having a mentor will um, boost your career very quickly. Hacking your health, because without health, we can't do really uh, anything. So um, another very important thing is to have focus, because without focus, you just do everything, and in the end, you learn nothing uh tracking your goals why because if you do um things and if you accomplish many things um without tracking your goals you you don't feel you're having progress so that's why it's so important to track your goals work smart and hard optimize your time deliberate practicing take action we're gonna go much deeper on uh, into those topics and uh, let's go then to the first one, dream big. So why not dream big? Um, sometimes I know that people might think, oh, but dream big is, is, is difficult. Dream big is very, um, and it might be, but if you don't dream big and, and uh, if you don't, um, if, if you don't strive for better things in your life, you're going to regret very probably. So the best thing you can do is to do your best to achieve whatever you want, right? So, but there's also the other situation that sometimes you don't know what is your dream exactly. So what you can do to figure this out, you can reflect about yourself. Um, and how can you do that? You can, for example, a walk, uh, Preferably in, in, in nature, because naturally we just stay calmer when we are walking in nature. I think this is important exercise. You can also take some notes. Maybe you can uh, take some notes all on your uh, notebook um, or even on your computer. And then you can get this clarity 
uh, from what you want exactly. And another question I have to make to you um, is, to, uh, is to say, why not you? Um, if other people achieved amazing things, it means that it is possible. Of course, there will be some work, there will be some steps and strategies you have to do, but why not you, right? Um, very important to be specific about your dreams because if you have many dreams and if you try to talk to achieve all of them, chances are that you won't get any of them because a dream is it's a long-term goal. It's something difficult to achieve. Um, and a very practical example of a dream is to maybe get your dream job abroad in another country, um, a job in Europe or uh, in the US or even in Brazil. Um, you can get an amazing job for uh, an amazing company, big companies, and it's not easy to get a job on those companies. So this could be considered a dream as well. And another thing that's important to mention here is that my dream might not be necessarily your dream. So you don't need to achieve my dreams in the same. I don't need to achieve your dreams. You need to achieve the dream that is meaningful for you. So you have to figure out, okay, what is important for yourself? So that's, that's crucial for you. Otherwise you will be achieving the dreams of someone else. The second step is taking responsibility. I know that it's very easy to, to take responsibility when you are successful. When you're successful, you tend to say, oh, um, because of me that I am successful. And then when bad things happen to you, then you don't take responsibility. And that's a mistake because when something tough happened to you, or when something that's challenging, and if you don't take responsibility, what's gonna happen is that you're never gonna grow. So I know it's tough, but uh, when something that, uh, when things go in the way that you weren't planning, it's important for you to take uh, responsibility because if you blame someone else, if you blame external factors, What's going to happen is that you have no power to change. You have no power to grow. So it's important for you to say, like, if anything happened in my life, um, whether it is successful thing or a, a failure, you have to take uh, responsibility and you have to say, okay, where was my mistake here? What actions can I take to improve that? And then once you do that consistently, then you grow. And again, it won't be easy. There will be days that you really don't want to do the, the right thing for your growth, um, but it will be also crucial for you to do that. Um, and be solution oriented because sometimes um, a lot of problems will happen to you. And instead of focusing on those problems, instead of talking about the problems and focusing only on those problems, you can be solution oriented. So you can think, okay, I have this problem. How can I solve that? How, what is my action I can, I can take? Another mistake that um, people do very often is when they have a challenge, when they have a problem, they try to overwhelm themselves with multiple impossible actions. Instead of overwhelming yourself, you can take small actions and these will build up and the more actions you take to achieve whatever you want the better you get so it's very crucial for you to not blame others and we don't uh, we don't just blame others we blame also our past sometimes we blame our education we say oh my education was not good but what you can do regarding your, if you are doing interviews, I'm going to just give you an example. If you are doing interviews abroad and the interviews are too difficult and you blame your past, if you if you blame your education from the past, this means that you are uh, giving your, uh, your power away to your past. Therefore, you are powerless. 
So you have to be careful because when you um, when you don't take responsibility, um, it's very difficult to achieve your dreams or to go to the next level uh, in your career or in your life. Have a mentor, so important. Um, I uh, I uh, had a I have a mentor, Bruno Souza, and he helped me massively to to get to where I am and uh, to be a better software engineer and a better person. And like I had the exponential growth working with him. Um, and you can do the same. Uh, you, you can find a mentor um, who who got what you want. Uh, then you gain time, your vision will be expanded and you grow exponentially. So why it's important to have a mentor? It's because then you save tons of time. You save 15, 20, 30 years, I don't know. You save a lot of time in your career, you just go much faster because you don't need to go uh, in, in different ways in your career, you just go straight. You go straight because uh, once you are aligned with your mentor, with your objectives, then you just have to take the actions that will take you there. So that's why it's so important to have a mentor. Um, so I highly recommend every one of you to find your mentor. Um, it doesn't need to be Bruno, doesn't need to be me. Um, it can be even a friend of yours. Um, but it's important for you to, to have a mentor and so that your, uh, your mentor will uh, help you exponentially um, for you to, to achieve your um, career um, dreams. Hack your health. So why health is so important? Well, because without health, we can't do really anything, right? You can work your whole life, you can achieve amazing things, you can build an empire. But if you have no health, it means that you won't be able to enjoy anything. So um, you want to be able to travel, you want to be able to have a, a pleasurable uh, day. Um, you won't have much to do. So that's why it's so important to uh, have a good health. So what can you do with that? Like you have a reasonable nutrition. Like if you eat junky food more than three times a week, that's a big problem because uh, this will affect your productivity. This will affect your mood. Uh, uh, this will also uh, affect, uh, it, it will affect your health basically. So have a reasonable nutrition. Like you don't need to have a crazy diet, um, eating only, um, I don't know, only vegetables or only fruits, but have a balanced diet, like um, <clears throat> where you can eat some fruits some vegetables. Uh, if you eat meat, you can eat meat. Um, but uh, the point is to avoid junky food as much as you can and do exercise at least three times a week. And you don't need to do boring things because I know that going to the gym is, is boring. You can you can um, play some kind of sport. You can play football. You can play tennis. You can play, um, I don't know, even hockey if you want. Um, or you can dance. You can do a martial art. Um, you can go to yoga. There are so many things you can do to um, improve your health. And that's so important because when you do exercises, when you have a good nutrition, you even get sharper the software engineer. Why? Because when you do exercises, your body releases a lot of hormones, a lot of uh, good substances that um, will increase, that um, will even make your neuron connections faster, which will help you to be a sharper software engineer and a sharper learner. And as you know, as a software engineer, we have to learn constantly. So if you do exercises, if you have a reasonable nutrition, that will make a big difference. And preferably, if you can do exercise in the morning, that's the best, because if you do the exercise in the morning, you're going to get all the benefits for around 16 hours. Um, 
and there is another uh, another component when you do exercises that uh, there is um, a scientific um, discovery that when we do exercises, uh, actually more of the aerobic exercises you release BDNF that, as I said before, it will make your neural connections faster. Therefore, you're going to be a sharper learner. So if you can do exercises in the morning, it's going to also set up the whole day for you in, in a great way. Um, and uh, I think it's pretty much that about health. So health is very important. Um, so health should be your top priority. It should be on the top of everything. Because like I said, without health, nothing else matters. Because you can't even live if you don't have enough health. So it should be your top priority. And of course, like if you do exercises, if you uh, have uh, like good, uh, good food, you're going to even fit, you're going to even feel more confident and uh, like you're going to be more fit. You're, you're going to uh, be able to, to, uh, to walk longer, to run. You're going to be, um, you're going to be stronger as well. So, there's a lot of benefits, lots of benefits, not only for your body, but for your mind. So it's extremely important. Uh, and like my personal training, like it's, I have a very balanced diet. I drink, I try to drink two liters of water every day. You don't need to drink two liters if you don't want to. You can drink one liter, you can do that uh, bit by bit. Um, and what I do, I also hack uh, my time. I uh, when I go to the gym, I listen to an audiobook. So that's that's a good habit to have. I've been listening to books for more than three years, and I could read, I don't know, more than maybe more than uh, one hundred and fifty books. So that's a lot, right? So track your goals. So why it's important to track your goals? Because if you're studying, if you're doing anything, if you're working towards a goal, if you don't measure that, what's going to happen is that you're probably going to get demotivated. So one great thing that you can do to uh, get dopamine, that is the motivation hormone, you can use Pomodoro or um, you can use um, maybe the forest app. I have forest app that... Um, Basically, you can um, capture um, how much time you, you've been working towards your goals. And that's great because if you know that, okay, uh, I've been working on, let's suppose you, you have, you want the Java certification. I've been working the Java certification for 100 hours or uh, 200, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Um, but it's important for you to the point here is, is that it's important for you to keep a track of your goals and it's important for you to time yourself. For example, the Pomodoro technique is basically a timer. It's a 25 minutes timer. And the point on those during those 25 minutes is that you can't look at your social media. You can't look at, uh, um, oh, at, uh, at your TV, you can't look uh, somewhere else. You have to focus on your work. And that's amazing because when you focus on your work, you save a lot of time because a focused work, like one hour of focused work is much better than three hours of non-focused work. So that's why it's so important for you to use the Pomodoro technique because when you put the timer, you are focused on your work, you get things done, and another important concept here to be consistent is to do things even when you don't feel like it. This is difficult, but it pays off. So it's worth it. Trello is a, basically a board. Uh, like you, you, you probably use board when you are working as a software engineer. Um, so it's kind of a Kanban. So you put your task on the, on the to-do uh, block 
doing, and then you put on doing, then you put on done. And that's good because uh, if you have those kind of uh, tasks management, then um, you can, uh, then you're going to release dopamine, basically. That is the motivation hormone. Um, and the more dopamine you get, the easier it is for you to get more things done. And one other uh, very important thing is to not look at your cell phone uh, during the morning. Why? Because every time you look at your cell phone, dopamine is released in your brain. So, and when you consume a lot of dopamine before getting things done, what happens is that you have motivation to do your stuff. So be careful. Social media, emails, all of those things, WhatsApp, uh, will take out your dopamine and will take out your motivation. So be careful with that. I recommend you to not look at your cell phone at least um, until one hour after you wake up. That's a very good practice because then you can work towards your goals during this first hour of your day. Or you can do exercises or you can do something that will contribute for your growth, not for your uh, not for your um, dopamine destruction. Okay. And of course, uh, by doing that, you're far more likely to get your goals done consistently. So have focus. Why have focus? Because if you have too many plans, what usually happens is that we get overwhelmed and we do nothing. So it's better for you to focus on one thing that's meaningful for you instead of focusing on many things that makes no sense in the end. So if you focus on too many things, you uh, will end up not doing anything very well. So it's better for you to focus on one thing that is meaningful for you. So if uh, I gonna, can give you an example, if you are uh, working towards having your Java certification, you should have a, you, you could have a plan to um, study uh, a Java concept. Um, and uh, it's better for you to focus on, on, on the Java certification. And uh, if, if you have too many plans, if you are focusing on the Java certification, on the Azure certification, or on the on whatever other certification, your chances are um, that it's, it's going to be more difficult for you to, to get any of those certifications. So it's better for you to choose one, choose one, you focus on that one, and then you get it. And I, I'm going to give you another example. Let's suppose you want to uh, work on Google or on uh, Facebook or Amazon. If you want to work on those companies, you you probably know that they will ask you for algorithms, um, uh, knowledge, and also system design. So if you are if you if your objective is to work on those big companies, you should be very good in algorithms, data structures, big O notations. Um, you should be very good with system design. Um, and of course, there are uh, some strategies you, you can do to get better on those topics. Uh, so it depends on your goal in the end. So what do you want? Do you want to get a Java certification? Do you want to get a job in a big company? What is your goal exactly? Depends on your goal. The point here is that you should focus on one thing that's meaningful for you. Otherwise, uh, many plans uh, lead you to no action because it's overwhelming. It's impossible to learn everything. So learn, learn only what you need. Uh, let's suppose, like, and this is uh, even more true nowadays because we are working with microservices. So with microservices, it means that you build your own architecture. Sometimes you have to collect business requirements. Uh, you have to uh, with your team. Um, sometimes you have to break, even break down your tasks. So you have to do kind of everything. Uh, like in many companies, I know that this is not the reality, 
uh, in some companies, but in many companies nowadays, this is the reality because we changed uh, the um, our uh, paradigm. So now we are in uh, working with microservices. So uh, the concept of ownership is is very ingrained uh, in, in in this new culture. So. Um, in that case, when you're working with microservices, you're going to have to uh, work with many new technologies. You're going to have to, for example, learn uh, maybe event-driven architecture, or you're going to have to learn uh, keys. You're going to have to learn a little bit about concurrency or about scaling. So you're going to have to learn all of those things, right? So in this situation, you can use the just-in-time learning technique, which means that you can learn that at the time that you get a task, because it's so normal to get a new thing when you're working with microservices that um, there is no point for you to be willing to go deep into all of those technologies. There's there's no point. If you do that, you, you, you're gonna just waste your time. So use your time wisely. I would recommend every software engineer to, instead of learning tools, instead of learning a lot of framework, frameworks, a lot of, instead of learning all of those crazy things that all of those shiny toys learn the fundamentals because if you learn the fundamentals you're going to be able to learn those tools far more quickly and then you won't be wasting your time learning tons of tools instead of you learn the fundamentals you get sharp on that and then you learn things quicker and there is a special gift for you so stay tuned for more work smart and hard what does that mean so I'm going to give you a practical situation. So if you work hard in one thing that doesn't make any sense for you, what's going to happen is that it's useless, right? Let's suppose you are uh, learning German for some reason. If you never use it, if you never use this skill, it's a useless skill, right? You, you just put your time there to learn this language, but you don't even know where to use it. My point is, is that uh, uh, if you learn something just to learn, just for knowledge, it doesn't matter. You have to learn something so that you can apply uh, this knowledge so that you can use this knowledge because knowledge is not power. Knowledge is only power if you can use this knowledge. So be extra careful on the things that you are learning. Um, and uh, when I say about working smart, is to learn something meaningful or to take the action that is meaningful for you. Because if you work only hard on something that will not take you to your objectives, it doesn't matter how hard you are working, all the work will be wasted. So think very carefully before taking an action and decide. Uh, what are uh, what you're gonna be doing, and then if you work um, smart uh, towards your goals, it's it's better than work hard on something that doesn't make any sense. But working only smart might not be enough. You have to work smart and hard. So uh, it doesn't mean that you have to work like 16 hours a day. Uh, it means that like working hard and smart is basically to be consistent because to be consistent is hard because like I said, there will be days that you don't want to do the thing that you decided to do. And it, those days are the most important days for you to be consistent. Um, so that's the balance about being uh, working smart and hard. Um, and working hard here, yeah, like I said, is, is basically the idea of being consistent. So if you can work towards your goals, at least, I don't know, uh, one hour a day, or if you don't have much time, uh, 30 minutes a day, or if 30 minutes too much to you, 15 minutes. If 15 minutes too much, five minutes a day. You can apply those techniques because this is a kind of uh, a brain hack because if you tell yourself that you're going to do work only for five minutes, uh, you can do five minutes, 
you don't need to force yourself. But the thing is that some days when you do five minutes, you're going to say, oh, I want to continue this work and you're going to continue the work. So what's going to happen is that those five minutes will probably become more than five minutes. And this is a brain hack. You can use that. If, if you feel that one hour to you to work towards your dreams is too much, tell yourself it's five minutes, just five minutes. If I don't feel like going further than that, it's OK. I won't go. But if you feel like going further than five minutes, you go more than five minutes. And then you get things done. And uh, you can write a book in five minutes. Uh, five minutes a day, you can do amazing things. So five minutes is much better than nothing. Uh, eight, optimize your time. So I told you a little bit uh, how I do this technique. When I go to the gym or when I commit to work, I listen to uh, books. Um, and that helps me massively on my English. So every every single book I, I, I listen is in English. Um, and every single content I consume is in English, like the vast major, major, majority of the content I consume is in English. So those things happen, help me to improve my uh, fluency. And this is a technique you can use as well. Uh, you can read so many books and it's not only that, of course, I, uh, I get to listen books that are really, really powerful that, uh, expanded my, my, my view to be a better person and you can do the same. I, listen a lot of personal development books. Um, I listen to some uh, technical books, but I usually prefer to read technical books because you're going to see a lot of code. Um, you can also listen to podcasts. Why is there? They are so good. There, uh, there are so many good tech uh, podcasts um, that uh, it, it's okay if you want to listen, if you want to mix both. But in my opinion, Books are still more powerful than podcasts. Uh, in, in every book, you can have an amazing insight that will help you with your goals uh, and uh, in your career. Um, sometimes when you have too many things to do, you can use your money to optimize your time. So for example, um, if you are working in a project um, and uh, you, you have no time uh, to clean your house, for example, maybe you can pay someone else to clean your house. Um, or, um, you want, uh, a design for your book. You can hire a designer instead of, uh, yourself spending, I don't know, more than 20 hours to build a design and in the end it won't be even, uh, that good. So it's good for you to use your money to optimize your time. Like, of course, if if you are working in too many things, that's useful. Otherwise, if you are just studying, I think like, well, it depends on your situation, but you can use th this technique as well. Uh, discover the power of the liberating. So what is the liberty practicing? It's what uh, top software engineers do and not only top software engineers. Um, it's also what world-class uh, football players, basketball players, they all use the same technique. And what is this? It is a way to practice their uh, craft in a strategic way. So, for example, a football player can uh, uh, kick the ball to the goal, uh, I don't know, a thousand times a day until it's so natural to this football player that um, the, the football player gets very, very, very sharp at that skill. And the same thing with programmers and software engineers. Um, one very simple example I can give you to be a sharper software engineer is to practice algorithms because with algorithms, you become a better problem solver. You learn coding techniques. You learn how to optimize your code. Um, you can even practice your clean code skills. So there are many things you can practice there. Um, you're going to be better for interviews that will help you on interviews. So uh, I'm just giving you a, an example. It depends. 
again, it depends on your goals. So uh, it's, uh, in my opinion, it's better to focus on the fundamentals because if you are sharp on the fundamentals, you can learn the superficial things more, uh, more quickly because the superficial things in the end, they are just based on the fundamentals. So if you learn the fundamentals, it means that you have the basis to uh, learn something else more quickly. And again, guys, uh, proficiency will never be achieved overnight. Proficiency will be achieved over time. It will be achieved with your consistency. Um, that's the only way. So if you want to get really good, really sharp with algorithms, data structures, big O notations, you, again, this is just an example. You, it could be anything else, but I'm gonna just, uh, just uh, gonna give you an example of algorithms. Uh, if you want to get proficient on, on algorithms, you're gonna have to practice uh, like maybe uh, once, uh, no, like maybe every day of the week or three times a week. Uh, it's gonna have to be consistent because it's a lot to learn. And there's a lot of brain connections you have to build to be better in algorithms and programming. So the more problems you solve, the more connections you're gonna generate in your brain. And which means that you're gonna be faster to, um, uh, to solve an algorithm, for example. And this is the same for any other skill. If you, are, if you want to uh, give a talk, um, the more talks you give, the easier it gets, the more comfortable you get. Uh, if you want to give a talk in English, you can practice to give a talk in English. In, in, in the beginning, it will be difficult um, because you just have to accept that every new skill you are learning, you're going to suck in the beginning. And that's okay. If you are able to accept that, uh, I, this is a very important step because many people doesn't have the guts to accept that. Therefore, they don't take action. And as a consequence, they never grow. So if you accept the fact that you're going to suck in the beginning, but even still you go forward and you push forward that, then you're going to do great. You're going to grow. It's just inevitable. The more you do, if you don't get demotivated, if you don't give up, you're going to get better. So... Um, whatever you're doing, whatever you think it makes sense for you, keep doing it. Take action. So everything I told here, guys, um, all of those things are meaningless if you don't take action. Action is what uh, is what makes your life change. So, um, well, there are many actions you can take to, to improve your career. So. Uh, you can take strategic action towards your objectives. So what could that be? It could be to find a mentor or it could be to uh, study something more strategically to get to where you want. Um, and um, to, uh, yeah, it, it, it could be to, to send a CV to a company you want or to send a CV to a company abroad, anything you want. So you have to take an action. Without action, nothing happens. And do do the thing, even if you don't feel prepared. And that's very important. That's that's very connected to courage. And without you can't do you, you can't do anything. So it's very important for you. Like if you don't have skill, if you don't have anything else, but you have courage, the courage will get you. Like your skills will get you. Uh, like. You, you're, you're going to get the skills because if you have the courage to, to take the, the action, to, to take the step, um, then you, you can accomplish whatever you want, right? So um, um, it's, it's very important for you to do it even if you don't feel prepared. Because by doing it, like it's a paradox here, right? The only way for you to feel prepared is if you do it. So you do it first even if you don't feel prepared. And then you need courage, right? You need courage to do things that you don't feel prepared. And if you do, congratulations for you because that's the way to growth. And many people don't do that. They, they, they don't have the guts. 
they don't have the the courage to to feel to face rejection or to face critics and if you have the guts to face critics and face rejection congratulations for you because you you have the courage to to um, to get and to achieve your dream so uh, that's the way like with courage you can get whatever you want because the other thing skills uh or how, how much our, our confidence or our everything there if you take the courage first to do the thing it's far more risky to not take any risk and that's another paradox um sometimes people think that they are secure in their companies they get comfortable they work with boring technologies they don't grow technically they don't grow uh, in, in any other area and if they stay there for 10 years and suddenly the company decides oh that's it uh, we went bankrupt and then they fire every, everyone what's going to happen with this developer that was comfortable what's going to happen is that this developer will have to uh, do a huge amount of work to get another job because this developer was comfortable in, 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 in his or her position. So um, it's very important for you to be always looking for more knowledge outside of your work because um, we can't subestimate, we, we can't, sorry, we can't underestimate the power of studying. The more you study, um, the better you get. You get ahead if you study. And uh, I know this is very obvious, even more in our area of software development. But um, if you study in a very strategic way, you get ahead in the game. So uh, basically, take risks. So if you see a nice company that works with cutting edge technologies that you are interested in, in learning, send a CV, try it out. What you don't want is to be comfortable because um, it's it's not safe to stay in a company that you do the boring thing because you never know like tomorrow or someday uh, uh, the company bankrupt or they might fire people all of the sudden so it's always it's very good for you to always be employable to know what is the game um, in the market uh, for example I, I can give you an example of the game here in Europe. The game here is basically algorithms and system design. So you have to play the game. You have to know algorithms and system design. If you don't know them, it's very difficult, right? Uh, you have to know the game in the country you are you want to, to work. I don't know what are the, the, the game rules exactly now in, in Brazil, but you have to figure this out. You have to figure this out. Uh, and if you are looking for jobs in Europe, I'm just gonna let you know that you're gonna need to know of course, object oriented programming, algorithms, system design, uh, clean code, uh, code design. So, a lot of stuff. Um, so, basically, you uh, figure out what actions make sense to you, figure out where you want to, uh, to, to go, because then you can take meaningful actions. Don't take meaningless actions. First, uh, have a think, like, Think uh, about uh, what you want. And again, guys, you don't need to create a crazy plan, a very complex plan. You need something to get you going, something that will get you motivated, right? So create a plan right now. You can write on, in a paper or you can write on your, uh, on your uh, uh, Google Doc, whatever you want. You can write there some simple plan, some some very simple actions, some simple uh, goals, or maybe you can even go further. You can write uh, a challenging goal that could be called as a, as, a, as a dream, right? So once you do that, then um, you 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 make your your thoughts concrete. And that's very important because if you um, if you just keep your thoughts in your head, difficult uh, to make it happen. So take the action, take this simple action, write it down what you want, 
in, in the, for the next year or for uh, the next couple of years, because then you have a direction, then you have a plan. And then you're going to know roughly what actions you can take. Okay, let's recap here. Uh, the first thing is to dream big, because if you don't dream big, you can't get much. So if you dream big, um, you're going to be far more motivated. You're going to take actions to grow as a person and in your career. Take responsibility. What does that mean? It means that you shouldn't blame others. You shouldn't blame external factors. You should blame yourself. You should blame yourself for success and failure. Because if you blame yourself for those two things, it means that you have power. You're not giving your power away to someone else. Have a mentor. If you have a mentor, uh, your mentor will uh, guide you far more quickly to get what you want. Uh, hack your health. Uh, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that you need to do crazy diet or need to do exercises seven days a week. It means that you can have a balanced diet. You, you can uh, do aerobic exercises like running. You can run. You can do a martial art. You can play sport. Anything that uh, make you happy. Um, you can even dance. Uh, like whatever you prefer. Like have a plan to um, to do exercises and have a, a balanced uh, um, um, food. And um, have focus because if you try to do everything, what's going to happen is that you're going to get overwhelmed and you, you're going to do nothing. So have a focus. Um, track your goals. How can you track your goals? You can use Pomodoro. There is a website, uh, pomodoro.com. I don't remember exactly the, the URL, but you can put Pomodoro on, on Google and then you can, uh, you can find this tool. And it's very useful because then you can focus at your work. And this saves you tons of time. And work smart and hard because if you work only hard, you might be doing something that's meaningless. So it's better for you to do something that um, is connected to your dreams and your goals. But at the same time, it, it has to be consistent because if you do the smart work only once, it doesn't matter. You have to be consistent So and optimize your time. Um, so for example, whenever you go to the gym or whenever you go uh, to commute to your work, uh, let's suppose you commute to work two hours a day. If you sum up, if, if you sum these, um, these numbers towards the year, like you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna notice that you might be wasting a, a lot of uh, time. So why not to listen to an, an, a great book during your commuting or during the time you are going to the gym or during the time you are uh, doing some task that doesn't demand you a lot of brain power. In deliberate practicing, um, every world class player do that uh, football players top basketball players they are not they are not top players because of nothing it's because they are uh, very strategic on their skills and they practice their skills deliberately they um they're very um they're very focused as well so this makes the whole difference if you have focus if you have a strategy if you uh, do if you take actions consistently, you're gonna you you have uh, the, a, a great potential to be a world class engineer as well. Um, and of course, take action because without action, nothing happens. So you have to have the um, the habit of uh, always taking action whenever you can, right? And I'm gonna give you. Um, one opportunity to take action. You can scan this uh, Golden Lessons book. And uh, if you purchase this book now, uh, which is, uh, I think it's it's like it's 399 euro. So it's basically 4 euro. It's something around um, 19 reais. It's, it's very cheap. If you take this action now, uh, I 
can give you a free career conversation, a one-to-one -one conversation, and I can uh, guide you. Uh, I can help you elaborate a plan for you in your career to go to the next level. Whatever you want, if you want to work abroad, if you want uh, uh, to work uh, in Brazil with a cut in Irish technology, um, you can buy the book now and then we can, um, I can guide you in your career. So take the action now. Uh, that's one, um, that's, that's, that's one opportunity for you to, to show that you're an action taker and I can certainly help you to get where you want. Okay. So that's it. Any questions? I can't hear you, Maximilian. Oh, I <laughs> I was uh, muted. <laughs> okay, so it was amazing uh, presentation, Rafael. We we got a question. We got a question from uh, Simon Pedro. Simon Pedro asking is asking, how can I optimize my time with a lot of technology to study? Um. Let me just share uh, the link with the guys here, Maximilian, just a minute, because then it's easier for them. To, sure. To... Can you share with them? Where all oh, the private chat is here. We're gonna send here. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, basically, Simo, you you need to focus. Like, um, you 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 have to know where do you want to go like what do you want exactly do you want another job in brazil do you want another job abroad i think that's the first question i have to ask you because if you want a, a job in brazil with a specific technology for example uh what you can do you can take a look at these companies what those companies are asking for what technology they are asking for um because, for example, if they are, oh, I'm just giving an example here. If they are asking for Spring or uh, microservices or uh, AWS knowledge, maybe you, you, you can focus on those technologies. But like I said before, it's very important for you to focus on the fundamentals. Because if you keep on learning tools and frameworks, um, your learning curve will be always not so good. So. And on the other hand, if you learn fundamentals and you're very sharp in fundamentals, one example, one clear example of fundamentals is algorithms. If you are very sharp in algorithms, um, you're going you're gonna to be able to learn a new programming language far more quickly because if you see, if you notice under the, under the hoods, under the hoods, all those, tech, all those programming languages are using the same fundamentals. And the fundamentals doesn't work uh, only on the situation. The fundamentals are also uh, very important. Like when you are uh, doing work on the cloud, you're gonna see many networks fundamentals there. It's important for you to have an idea of those fundamentals before uh, doing work uh, in, in the cloud. Or So what I would recommend you, Simon, is to first understand where do you want to go? Uh, like if, because, uh, if you don't know where you want to go, then you're going to have to study everything, right? Because there's no way, like you have to know, like where, where do I want to go? Do I want to go abroad? If you want to go abroad, I'm just, I'm telling you ahead of time. You have to learn algorithms and system design. Um, um, and, but yeah, you, you have to know, like, if you can tell me what you want exactly it depends it depends on what you want because like you said technologies there are millions there's a new shining toy every day if you want to learn all of them well like i said it's like working hard you're gonna work hard towards something that won't bring you any value so you have to work smart how can you work smart you work smart uh, if you know where you are going that's the only way Well, it, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 
the fundamentals is so important as well. You you did right, and um, uh, according my experience, uh, we need to pay attention to those things, especially because um, once we we just run on a not shallow. It's 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 something hard to to grow up your career to the next level, and uh, well, great tips, man, great tips. <laughs> I take a note everything, so I will try to follow those things. <laughs> this tips is amazing. This tips working really work a lot. I use this tips in my life, and oh my god, my life have a great upgrade after using this tips, and, and they put my career. Amazing. amazing. It's, it's amazing. It's awesome. <laughs> that's 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 really cool. And that's that's the goal. Like uh I can inspire people to to be the best as they can. That's I think that's that's an amazing thing to do. Yeah, I must thank you, Rafael, for this presentation. It was so uh, it, it bring us uh, inspiration to keep in working, keep in learning, keep in working ahead. So I must thank you a lot. And uh, it, it is the first time that we are talking <laughs> together. Mm -hmm. Am I right? So it's a honor to talk to you again. I know that you are a good, uh, that you are a Java champion. So it, it, it also uh, inspires everyone in a whole Java world. So. But uh, Java, it's a tool, so uh, that, that's the reason why uh, you are talking about fundamentals. Fundamentals are the same in the both, in the all of technologies, so uh, it's amazing. So I must thank you. Uh, if you want to say something more, feel free to say that, am I right? Gabriel, uh, if you want to say something, take it yours. Hi. Uh, thanks, Rafael, for, for coming to this topic. Uh, you, you, your presentation it's, it's amazing. I I hope it inspiration a lot of people because we share a, a lot of kind a, a lot of channels in YouTube, uh, Java, uh, so Java, Java Journey, Max, and channel Maximilian, I forget the name, sorry, and the Bruno Souza channel. Uh, and she's a presentation. It's it's how, how, how say uh, great light you you eyes, right? And this is amazing. Thanks, Rafael, for coming to 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 stop. Awesome, it's, awesome. And, really the, <laughs> and the sound is very high here, and I'm very confused. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. You're very kind. Um, uh, I'm very glad that, uh, I could, uh, be part of the campus party. Unfortunately, I'm not in Brazil. Otherwise I would be with you. Uh, but it's my pleasure. It's, it's, I'm really happy to be here and I hope to, to be helped, um, uh, um, the, the software engineers and, uh, I wish you guys a great, uh, campus party, a great event and, uh, Looking forward to talk to you again. Sorry. You are muted, Maximilian. Oh God, again. <laughs> it's a, my my microphone is tricked me. Oh god. Oh uh okay guys, so have a, have a good uh have a good uh event. So feel feel turn it feel turn it because uh, we continue our session. Next session we will start in a few minutes, so stay turned. Bye everyone, see you there. Bye, I see you. Bye bye guys. Bye bye.